Hello there, name's Tricky Cypher. Nice to see you all again. Except for you, Dave. You might be wondering, where's that red fox? Well, he is right over there in this box. Your next question probably is, why is a fox in a box? Short answer, a friend stuffed him in and he can't get out. No, he might have died in the meantime or maybe he's still kicking. Unless you guys are willing to look inside to find out, you must assume both. And that, kids, is what we call Schrödinger's Fox. Free tales obviously can't review an episode in this box. And since I got nothing better to do, I take care of this pointless endeavor to analyze a cartoon about rainbow colored ponies for him. You're welcome. Now, a flurry of emotions and so far a very special episode, as it is the first one that features the Brony community's very own Antichrist since the introduction in season 6. Sure, she appeared here and there, but she wasn't really the focus. Even the crystalline she only caused a catastrophe, while the story was more about Rincewind and Equalizer. So, how's the Antichrist portrayed in this episode? Deadly adorable is probably the best way to put it. Every time she's on screen she gives someone diabetes. A truly devilish scheme, I must admire. Another great sign of her being the Antichrist is that she is seemingly really clever for a child of her age. This is especially evident when she is interacting with the twins. No, not that one. The pony ones. Small reminder, those kids were born back in season 2, quite some time before Egghead became a princess, and we got two Christmas episodes since then. These kids must therefore be about two or three years old. You would think they would at least be able to form some simple sentences by now. It's the same thing with the bug tattoo counselors. Years pass and no one ages. I don't know about you, but it does kinda annoy me that the show constantly addresses the passing of time, but the production team is too lazy to make some new puppets for child characters. In any case, while the mystery twins here still act like babies and not like toddlers, the actual baby that is at best one year old acts more mature and tries to encourage them to share. Sure, it does make things worse, as she breaks their toy, showing that she didn't exactly grasp the full situation, yet my point stands. And true to her antichrist nature, Nature, this baby displays some amazing magical feats. Yeah, in baby cakes it is explained that baby unicorns can have random magical outbursts. And of course this is even worse when this baby just happens to be an alicorn. But in the case of this adorable little antichrist, it doesn't seem like she has random magical outbursts to me. She seems to know rather well what she is doing, especially since she teleports all over the place. This is especially jarring because they actually explained how difficult teleportation spells are in the last episode and that it needs a lot of concentration. So yeah, I have my doubts that a baby that is maybe a year old can do it. Well, there's another small problem with that. When Eckhart gets angry, it is supposed to be wrong. And yes, the realization that she should have paid more attention to her niece holds true. And it is kinda wrong to scream at a one-year-old that doesn't know what she is doing. But since that baby happens to be the Antichrist and seems much more mature and intelligent, not to mention more capable to cause chaos, I can't really see why Eckhart should apologize for scolding her. She doesn't even really scream at her, she only raised her voice a bit. As that baby is portrayed as much more mature than it should be, it actually seems rather important to teach her what is right and wrong. You have to set limits, otherwise it will turn out to be a sport brat and cause even more chaos. Anyway, let's talk about Eckhart. First of all, I feel like I have to address that season 2 episode again. Back then, Eckhart said she couldn't babysit the Mr. Twins because she was busy and has the audacity later on to tell Party Pony that some ponies aren't fit to care for babies as they can't handle the responsibility. <coughs> If I were party pony, I would scramble Eckhart. But in all seriousness, well, it is easy to say that Eckhart should have known better than to take care of a baby, even though she is behind schedule, it is somewhat understandable. Unlike the season 2 example with the mystery twins, this one is personal. It's not like she is seeing her niece every day, so of course she would jump at the chance to spend a day with her. It also depends 
who is asking. When your brother and his wife are asking you for a favor, it is hard to say no. And while it would have been more responsible to cancel their appointments, this is Princess Eckert we are talking about. She hates it to let other ponies down, and she feels like that stuff is her responsibility. I think it also has to do with a bit of overconfidence. Unless the task is way over her head, she usually thinks she can handle it. So I can see why Eckert would make this mistake, even though she should know better. However, what I can't understand is why she would bring a healthy baby that is not even a year old to a room full of sick folks that have a contagious disease. This is beyond stupid. That baby should have the horsey hives the very very next day, way to prove how responsible you are. Well, and then there are of course Princess Toysets and her husband Dorky. Now I hear some people praising this episode because it finally gave those two a bit more character. Now I ask you, did it? Did it really? They are stressed out because keeping the Antichrist in check is rather hard and they can't wait to drop it off at Eckhead's place. Not to mention that they didn't tell her what to expect. Sure, they regretted it at the end, still not exactly charming. That being said, it clearly shows that they care a lot about their baby and usually don't neglect her, otherwise they wouldn't be that stressed out. And last but not least, there is that royal guard turned artist. Picasso over here actually already appeared in Rarity Investigates. He is one of the guards that neglected to do his work to eat some cake, so he probably got fired for incompetence. Anyway, he's actually a pretty cool guy. While the quality of his art is debatable, he has the right attitude. He basically embraces the death of the author concept. He doesn't really care that much if people understand the message he's trying to convey. He's open for different interpretations and actually enjoys it when his art speaks to people in a different way than intended. And I think that's rather respectable. Anyway, let's wrap things up. This episode was overall okay. A couple of jokes more would have helped, and it more or less teaches the same lesson as baby cakes. Eckert doesn't really learn anything new either. She shows in the past that she knows better, but her mistakes are still somewhat understandable. The main appeal of this episode is cuteness, and that's about it. It's rather harmless for the most part. If you ignore that Eckert exposed her niece to a contagious disease, and while that disease is probably not so dangerous, it is still really reckless on her part, and they never even address that. But what about you? Did you like this episode? Anything that bothered you? What do you think about the Antichrist? Let me know in the comments. I am Tricky Cypher, and remember, the universe is a hologram, reality is an illusion. Bye, gold, bye! Sly as a fox, you got me under your spell. But you know I'll never tell that I know you know so well. Sometimes you can be too smart, but you're a good